people do not know it exists, and when they first hear it, they just don't believe it. Until we let people know the real truth about the impact of this law, the government will not listen. So we need to educate people. We need to tell them the truth. I want to challenge you today. I want every one of you to speak to two other people you don't know about BSL and the impact it has. If every one of you speaks to two others, and they speak to two others, and they speak to two more, then we will be able to reach thousands of people in a relatively short time. I often find that the public perception of the Dangerous Dogs Act is that it protects the public from rabid, snarling dogs roaming the streets just waiting to attack. But the truth is that it doesn't, and that isn't how it works. Some of those that suffer are family dogs, ripped from their homes by a justice system that judges them on how they look. We want laws that protect humans and animals alike, so that when we go to the park for a family day out, our whole family, human and furry, can come along and play and have fun and be safe. Now I want you to consider something else. I want you to think about how this law affects our children. What is this teaching them? Any responsible parent brings up their children to respect the law of the land, to be honest and law-abiding, to respect authority and our elders. Children are taught that if you do something wrong, there is a consequence and that the law will protect you. We teach them not to make judgments based on physical appearance alone. Then the family dog they've known all their life, shared their secrets with, played ball with, cried tears into soft fur and learned about responsibility from is suddenly taken away by those we have taught them to trust. But they didn't do anything wrong. So how does that make sense? How does that fit into the beliefs and morals that we instill in them? What about how we look? What about how they look? Will someone one day say they look wrong, their head's too big or too wide? What kind of effect will this have on their futures? We domesticated dogs and as humans we have a moral responsibility to stand up when something is unjust and say that we want it change. So please have a peaceful, positive day and let's show this country that this is wrong and we demand the repeal of BSL and proper and just laws that protect our families, both human and furry. Thank you. Yay! As far as I could see, there was no aggression in him toward people or other dogs. I became a dog warden to save dogs' lives, not to kill dogs for no other reason than the shape of their bodies. Ice was found stray in Bridge End, Mid Glamorgan, on 1st of March 2009. A kennel worker said of him, I've never met such a good and loving dog. Despite his unfamiliar and stressful environment, I showed no aggression to either humans or other dogs. Ice offered nothing but kisses and a wagging tail. In return, by legal necessity, he was injected with a legal overdose of anaesthetic. Ice was destroyed on 8th of March 2009. at the door. Her owner opened the door to find police officers the other side looking for a dangerous dog. They said they would be seizing Fudge and asked her owner to sign consent. Her owner later found she had actually signed Fudge's death warrant and Fudge died on 22nd of March 2011. Buju was seized in 2010 for the owner's friend's back garden with a few other dogs. He was put down as pit bull type. The original owner found out later. 
Jojo was picked up as a stray and put down as Ed type in 2010. He was a stacking cross. Leonard was seized in Northern Ireland as a band for his type. Despite never having hurt anyone and after a two-year court battle, Lennox was ordered to be destroyed. Lennox died on the 11th of July 2012. Diamond was seized at home in 2010. Police refused to accept Diamond with Staffordshire Bull Terrier and forced the owner to sign over as she didn't want to be arrested or leave her toddler behind. Diamond was put down as pet bull type. These are dogs named from one local authority pound in South Wales. They were all strays that at one time had an owner, but once abandoned or relinquished were identified as being illegal types by the police dog legislation officer that regularly visits the pound. With no owner to fight for their lives, they were destroyed at the end of their seven days and died alone with strangers. Their only crime was to be born in the wrong skin. The law may have let them down, but we will never forget them, and they are the ones that inspire us each and every day in the fight against BSL. Their names are Boris, Jackson, Jake, Jasper, Joseph, Larry, Maisie, Sam, Shadow, Taz and Tommy. Rest in peace. Boogie was a four-year-old family pet, and he was loved very much by the children in his household. Boogie had never shown any aggression towards anyone but he was seized and ultimately destroyed in 2012 as the band's brief type. Trevor was a three-year-old Staffy Cross and had been part of my family since he was just a baby. He was my son. He was the most loving and gentle big softy you would ever meet. He had never so much as growled at anyone or anything. He was taken from me by a police officer claiming he was a pit bull terrier on June 10th, 2011. I was told he had been taken to be tested for being such a breed. That was at 9pm. At around midnight the same night, two officers returned and told me my boy had been destroyed. My family will never be the same again and we will never get over the loss of our beautiful boy. My four-year-old daughter still talks about him almost every day and has named the North Star as the Treva Star. You will be forever in our hearts, Treva. Finally, the hundreds of unknown dogs dying in pounds, rescue shelters, police kennels and vets around the country as a direct result of BSL. We will never know their names because for them it ends not with a bang but with a whimper. Sweet dreams. Until we meet again, run free at the Rainbow Bridge. We're going to have um, 21 rings of the bell to mark the 21 years.